Maybe, maybe the call of the world. It's Sunday morning on CBS. Here again is Jane Pauley. Gina Davis has been charming us with unforgettable performances for nearly 40 years. But her latest role is something of a surprise. She's advocating for actors who, like herself, are losing work largely because of age and gender. Tracy Smith is in conversation with an Oscar-winning activist. Boys. Getting mad. Okay, but where are we going? Oklahoma City. All right, everything in? Yeah. Has it really been 30 years? Here you go. Yeah, be careful. Almost from the day it opened in May 1991. Mom. Ridley Scott's feminist buddy movie, Thelma and Louise, was considered one of the most powerful films of a generation. Gina Davis, who'd lobbied for the role for more than a year, was Thelma. I can't go back. I mean, I just couldn't live. I know. To Susan Sarandon's Louise. But Davis was actually signed to play either part. I was going to be in that movie. I didn't <laughs> care. I was going to be in that movie. Did you know then that it would get the kind of reaction that it did? Absolutely not. None of us knew. It was a small movie, very small budget. And we just hoped people would see it and not hate the ending, uh, you know. But we had no clue it would strike a nerve like that. At the time, Gina Davis had already created some of the most memorable female characters on film, from a newly dead bride in Beetlejuice. Where are all the other dead people in the world? Why is it just you and me? To a quirky dog trainer in The Accidental Tourist. Should Edward be barking that way? <laughs> but Thelma and Louise was on another level. And of course, people said, this changes everything. Exactly. And? Oh, yeah, let me think of the ways. Oh, it didn't. So the change hasn't really, um, hasn't happened yet. Still waiting. Still waiting. That change she's waiting and working for is a film industry with as much opportunity for women as there is for men. There's one area of inequality that can be changed overnight, and that's on screen. Her own activism began in 2004, when she noticed there were a lot more boys than girls in the shows her young daughter watched. Data turns out to be the magic bullet. Davis commissioned a study, and as she showed in her 2018 documentary, shared the data with studio execs, who started casting more girls. And now, and now it's 50-50. And now it's 50-50. Right. But there are other problems that are proving tougher to fix. Have things gotten better for women in their 50s and beyond? Um, no, 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 it hasn't. It's very, it's much different for female actors past 50 than male actors past 50. The majority of female characters, I believe, are in their 20s, and the majority of male actors are in their 30s and 40s. To shed even more light on the issue, she helped start the Bentonville Film Festival. We're always looking for great films that are, you know, inclusive, that reflect society as it is. It's an annual event held in Bentonville, Arkansas, as a showcase for films that focus on diversity. But what's really on display here is opportunity, and that's something Gina Davis knows all about. After studying drama at Boston University, Davis found work as a model in New York City, and that actually helped her land her very first movie role. Oh, I'm right. sorry. Oh, that's, oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, it's quite all right. Uh, I'm April Page. Thank you. Seems they needed someone who looked good in underwear, and Davis, who'd been a model for Victoria's Secret, got the job opposite Dustin Hoffman in 1982's Tootsie. Oh, my goodness. What's wrong? I have to kiss Dr. Brewster. Oh, uh, yeah, he kisses all the women on this show. We call him the tongue. But clearly, she was a lot more than just a pretty face. You don't know what you want. One minute you like me and the next you don't. Davis's role as the quirky Muriel Pritchett in The Accidental Tourist earned her an Oscar nod. But right before she went to the ceremony, with then-husband Jeff Goldblum, she'd watched a show where critics agreed she had no chance of winning. I was just like, oh, oh, I see. Oh, all right, well, I guess I'll still go. I'm all dressed up. <laughs> and the Oscar goes to... 
Gina, Gina Davis, Davis, the accidental tourist. The funny thing was, it was Melanie Griffith and Don Johnson who were presenting the award, and Melanie kissed me when she handed it to me. And I was very conscious that I might have a pink kiss mark on my cheek now. So in my acceptance speech, I'm going, and I'd also like to thank, and it looks like I'm kind of shy or something, <laughs> but I'm actually just trying to cover up this potential kiss mark on my face. <laughs> in 1992, fresh off Thelma and Louise, she seemed right at home as a star baseball player. But truth is, she barely knew how to hold a bat. I didn't know how to play baseball or any sport. I really was so not athletic as a kid. I was always the tallest, tallest kid. Not just the tallest girl, but the tallest kid in my class and uh, very self-conscious and didn't want to try anything physical in case people would laugh at me. And uh, they were constantly begging me to be on the girls' basketball team. And I said, no, no, but I don't know how to play basketball. And they were like, just stand there. You're the tallest girl anywhere. Just be on the team. And I, no, you no, couldn't no. do it. But now I had to be the best baseball player anyone had ever seen. Oh, baby, she hit the cream cheese out of that one. As it turns out, she was a natural athlete. And after watching coverage of the U.S. archery team at the Olympics, she took up that sport and, at age 41, nearly made it onto the U.S. team herself. I got, I got really good. Yeah, in two and a half years, I was a semifinalist for the Olympic trials. Yeah. That's <laughs> wild. What do you think that did mentally oh, for you? It was incredible. It was all about the points. You, you either hit it or you didn't, you know. And, uh, and it was fascinating to do something that was that precise, and it wasn't up to people's judgment about what you were wearing or how you did it. It seems the game in Hollywood is a lot more subjective. Do you feel like Hollywood is finally getting it? I think so, you know, they made Black Widow, uh, you know, which recently opened to great success, and I think we're definitely headed more in that direction to have more blockbusters with women in the lead roles uh, is definitely happening more, which is very exciting, yeah. For her work toward diversity, she was awarded her second Oscar, the Jean Herschel Humanitarian Award in 2019. But now, at 65, her more personal goal is still elusive. Have you had more opportunities? You know, I make a joke about that, that like, because I'm working to get more female roles in movies and TV, that at some point this will actually benefit me personally. But uh, so far it hasn't. Is it kind of strange that things haven't changed for you? Yeah. That there aren't more parts out there? I mean, you won an Oscar a couple of years. It's, it's not like you people don't see you, you're out there. But there's so few. I mean, if you look at people in my age range, um, there's so few that are really getting, that are really working steadily, you know. There's just very few parts for people my age and older. So it's just bad odds, basically. Still, Gina Davis has beaten the numbers before. I call myself an impatient optimist. And in life, like her best movies, you just never know how it's going to end. I joke that I want my headstone to read I wish I'd spent more time at work. Because <laughs> I heard this country western song that said, have you ever seen a headstone with the words, I wish I'd spent more time at work? Like, of course not. <laughs> I want mine to say, but you, actually, I, I do wish I worked more, <laughs> yeah, actually. I'm fine, but it would have been nice. <laughs>